What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Excited to finally start this series again. Welcome back if you were part of the Madden 24 SFL version or welcome for the first time if you're new to the channel. After about a week and a half of grinding on Team Builder and making all 32 custom teams, we are finally here and ready for business. I dropped a video showcasing all 32 teams. I'll put a card at the top of the screen here if you guys want to check that out. I put in some major, major work, guys, to get this series started. Really hoping that it pays off, you know, still trying to get to that illustrious 1K subscriber mark. So if you guys who are already subscribed to the channel could tell your friends, your family to subscribe, you know, your grandma, even your neighbor, I don't care. That would be awesome. And if you're here for the first time, buckle up, get ready for business. I drop Madden 25 content weekly, multiple times a week. So if you like Madden 25 content or Madden football content in general, consider sticking around. But here's how the SFL works. So if you were in it last year, you know already what the deal is. But if you're new to the channel, this is what we got going on here. So I did a fantasy draft. So the entire league is all shifted around. Everybody's on random teams. No telling who went where, why, when, how, who, who's on what team, we don't know. We're going to find that out soon. But the great thing about this series, subscribers of the channel can join. That is right. If you are subscribed to this channel, you can join the SFL. This is an interactive series. So you can join as a creative player on any team you want. We're going to go through the teams here in a moment. I will have a pinned comment down below with all the instructions on what you need to get your uh, creative player joined here in the league. Um, all you have to do is comment below with the pinned comment, comment the info that I need, and I will add you in the next episode. SFL OGs, maybe you guys can, you know, show them, get it, get it started down there in the comment section. Show them what we do over here on the SFL because I will need your guys' player info again also. So very, very fun. Um, I play here as the Tuscaloosa Terminators, and I just absolutely love that logo. That's one of my favorites out of all 32 that I made. I made it kind of purple in the uh, in the team builder, but it came out here on Madden Pink, and I actually don't hate it, if I'm being totally honest. But I play Tuscaloosa Terminators every single week. That'll be a bulk of the gameplay that you will see. So, you know, kind of like a kind of like a main franchise series. Uh, insert your favorite Madden YouTuber. Uh, that's kind of like what it will be. But the great thing about this is at the end of every episode, I will showcase all the subscriber player stats, how you did for, you know, the week against whatever team you played. I also periodically do updates on season stats and league leaders and uh, things of that nature. And if you, if your team that your subscriber players on happens to be playing my Tuscaloosa Terminators in any given week, then you will get to see your subscriber player on full display. And in week one, we are taking on the St. Louis Sentinels, which is hilarious because that was my Madden 24 SFL team that I was rocking with. So I had to go ahead and re-add them in here, but better, in my opinion, better logo, better uniforms, better stadium design. So I had to go ahead and add the St. Louis Sentinels and another surprise team that if you don't know what it is, you will see here momentarily. All subscriber players start out at Star Dev, but check out my channel memberships here on the page because new to this year, all my channel members can start out at Superstar or even X Factor. It's like two bucks a month for channel memberships. You know, uh, if you want to support me and become a member of the channel, you get a bunch of cool perks. I don't make any money on ad revenue quite yet. So this is really, you know, kind of like a second job that doesn't pay anything if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, so if you're interested in that, check out the channel memberships. We also have an official SFL Discord server. Link is in the description below as always. Join that, it's free. You know, I post uh, stats in there, records, league leaders, all kinds of cool stuff. You can, uh, you know, talk some crap with uh, your fellow subscriber mates if you're playing them in any given week. It's just a great time. And I will have the link to the uh, SFL Discord down below. But with that all out of the way, guys, let's meet the league. Let's look at the teams. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man.
we will start things out here in the NFC North with the Milwaukee Motors, Harley Davidson inspired team. Harley Davidson Museum is located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You guys might get a little bit of a history lesson today because I really put some thought into these teams. So get ready for that. But Milwaukee Motors here in the NFC North. And I mean, the first thing I see, they got Miles Garrett and Chris Jones together on the defensive line. You got to be freaking kidding me. Who is going to have time to throw against this team? And Foye Aluakon as the linebacker and not a bad option either Tredavious White uh they got so they heavily heavily invested in the defense remember this is a fantasy draft so you know I had no control over where these players went all I did was draft for the Terminators but yeah uh, Milwaukee Motors heavily invested in the defensive line not so much at the quarterback position with Derek Carr huh? and uh, Austin Eckler as the halfback but defense could be a big big deal here in Milwaukee and then moving on to Another NFC North team, we have the Grand Rapids Lightning. Grand Rapids, Michigan, that was the uh, first hydroelectric power plant, if you could believe that, back in the 1800s. So it seemed fitting. Grand Rapids Lightning got the logo there with the lightning going into the water. I think it looks pretty slick. Amari Cooper as their number one player, not really sure. And Travis Etienne, I mean, I'm not really too sure how I feel about that. They're good players, but to be your best on the team, I just don't really know. Levante David also up there as well. They got a good quarterback, though, in Jalen Hurts, so maybe he can uh, kind of shoulder the load, and he'll be thrown to Sam Laporta, which is funny because I relocated the Detroit Lions, so Sam Laporta stays on the same squad. And, ooh, I thought that said Jordan Love. I was like, wait a minute. They got uh, Jalen Hurts and Jordan Love? No, that would be Julian Love. But the Grand Rapids Lightning don't look to be, you know, anything too crazy, but a good quarterback. Amari Cooper is a weapon. ETN, I think personally 90 might be a little uh a little little friendly for his rating, if you're asking me. But what do I know? Anyways, that is the Lightnings. Moving on to the former Green Bay Packers. We got the Dakota Pronghorns here. Nearly 50,000 pronghorn or antelope, as some may refer to them, located in the Dakota areas primarily South Dakota, and rather than giving this team a city name, I thought it would be cool just to go with Dakota, and that will encompass encompass both the North and the South. So whatever set your rep over there in Dakota, we got you covered on the Pronghorns. Amon Ross St. Brown, though, is their number one player, so very good. Legereus Sneed, also one of the best corners in the league, I would say, and Derwin James. So Sneed and Derwin James back there in the secondary could be given opposing quarterbacks fits, Khalil Mack still very good at his age. Vita Vea. So it looks like, again, aside from Amon Ross St. Brown, this team also heavily, heavily invested in the defense. T. Higgins is their wide receiver. And they got rookie J.J. McCarthy slinging the rock. Obviously not going to play this year in real life for the Vikings. But I learned my lesson in the Madden 24 iteration of the SFL. Injuries are off in this franchise. So if your subscriber player joins, you will not have to worry about them getting injured. Again, I said I learned my lesson. That happened a lot last year in the Madden 24 iteration, but it will not happen again. But J.J. McCarthy, Elijah Mitchell, uh, quarterback, running back duo in the backfield. Eh, nothing to write home about, you know. And rounding off the NFC North, I brought back the Toronto Thunderbirds. They were my SFL team in Madden 24 completely redesigned logo and uh team stadium looks much much more slick in my opinion they got travis kelsey they got stefan diggs two really good weapons in the receiving game and then also aj terrell and slay two very good weapons in the secondary corners as well david bakhtiari xavier mckinney so it's a couple of packers sitting over here cam sutton as their number one wide receiver don't know how good that is Ooh. ask the denver broncos they will tell you and then they got Geno Smith and Will Levis and Mitch Trubisky. So, yeah, okay. And Rashad White. So, not a whole lot of weapons uh, on the offense, you know, as far as they got some good receivers. But quarterback, running back, and eh, it's looking a little sketchy over there on the T-Birds. Moving on to the NFC East. We got the Fort Worth Rough Riders up next. Obviously, you know, Cowboys, Texas, it makes sense. And got the DFW in the logo there for the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Tua is their number one player and also their superstar quarterback. They got a very aging Stephon Gilmore, but can still 
probably play at a high level. We don't really know what this year is going to look like for him. And Christian Wilkins and uh, Matt Milano are their two big defensive pieces to go along with Greg Russo and Chase Young. So, I mean, could be something there to uh, and uh, David Montgomery, not the worst not the worst quarterback halfback duo in the world, but definitely, definitely could be better. And it looks like Tank Dell is either number one wide receiver. He is. So wide receiver room, a little sus, a little sus if you ask me. So don't know what they're going to have going on there in uh, Fort Worth, but we'll have to wait and find out. And then moving on to the next squad here in the NFC East, we have the Rochester Rebels. Nothing special with that name. I'm just a big fan of alliteration. So with the two R's, you know, Rochester Rebels, I suppose there's probably a lot of Rebels in the New York area, but in fairness, there's a lot of Rebels in the world. So not specific to New York at all. But CD Lamb is their highest uh, rated player. And as I record this here on August 26th, my man just got paid in the shade, becoming the second highest non or second highest paid non quarterback in NFL history. That holdout really worked out well for him because he's if he wasn't set for life before, which he was, he most certainly is now. He's their top player. Minka Fitzpatrick, very good safety. He's their second. Demarcus Lawrence, uh, you know, so a little bit of age over here. But then you got Trent McDuffie, a very good young up-and-coming corner. And uh, Andrew Thomas and Joel Batonio and Kevin Zeitler, some pretty good options on the offensive line as well. Raheem Mostert, I don't agree with that. Was he superstar? Maybe he got that. I don't think he was super sorry. He definitely, I don't think, should be. Maybe he got it like in training camp or something. I don't know. Not trying to hate, but I mean, come on. There's a lot of good players in the NFL. The SFL, rather. And then Anthony Richardson is going to be their quarterback. So that is uh, some of the highest rated guys over here on the Rebels. Brandon Cooks is their highest receiver, which, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's good, but definitely not to number one at least not uh, in this stage of his career. Then we got the Albany Argonauts, another two New York teams playing in the same division. That's kind of cool. And again, nothing special. You will see I'm a big fan of alliteration. I like it. Albany Argonauts, Rochester Rebels. There's a bunch more that you're going to see here in uh, in the SFL. But Zach Martin is their highest rated player, which, you know, he is a very good lineman. But I don't know if you really want your highest rated player to be a lineman. I don't know. Maybe. But Jamar Chase, very good weapon. Trayvon Diggs, we just saw Stefan Diggs not too long ago. There's his brother, Trayvon Diggs. Evan Ingram is uh, another pretty good player. And Joey Bosa. So they got some superstar talent and some X-Factor talent on this team as well. And then you got guys like Adam Thielen as your number two wide receiver. So doesn't have to play number one like he had to uh, <laughs> over there in Carolina. And oh, speaking sorry. of Carolina, so we got Bryce Young. So Bryce Young and Adam Thielen connection continues here in Albany. We'll have to see how that ends up. Hopefully it works out better for him in the SFL than it did last year in the NFL. And then, of course, uh, rounding out the NFC East, we got the St. Louis Sentinels, who we will take on in the first game. First uh, gameplay will be in the next episode because I want to give you guys, the subscribers, a chance to make your submissions down there in the comments so we can meet some of you guys in the first episode before gameplay. But here on the St. Louis Sentinels, they got Panay Sewell, and Laramie Tunsil, so a 97 and a 94 rated overall lineman are their two highest players. So whoever their quarterback is, which their quarterback is Desmond Ritter, okay? So Desmond Ritter is going to have some time to throw in the pocket. Lord, he's going to need it. So two very good offensive linemen, two very good wide receivers. Brandon Ayuk, uh, not uh, in, the same, uh, in the same situation as CeeDee Lamb. He's still kind of up in the air in real life but he is going to be their number one wide receiver to go along with michael pittman as their number two so two really good options there then you got teron johnson you got brandon scherf and uh this team used to be the commanders so a little bit of a little bit of lore there with brandon scherf and the commanders jalen carter ernest jones byron murphy so they have pretty good squad but uh that quarterback that quarterback position lots of question marks there in st louis and then moving on over to the NFC South, you got my team, the Tuscaloosa Terminators. And let's go ahead and meet these guys real quick because you will be seeing a ton of gameplay for, from them. So you might as well get to know them. And I'm very, very happy with how I did the fantasy draft. I lucked out. I did the snake draft and I got pick 32, which means I get pick one in the very next round. 
I was pretty happy about that. So I got back-to-back -back picks each and every round. Starting out here, our quarterback of the future, day one starter, is going to be Mr. Bo Nix from Oregon. It gets better, I promise. But in fairness, Bo Nix has been looking pretty good in preseason in Denver. They might have something there. He starts off as a 74 rated overall quarterback from us. And then I had to snag CMC. He is our highest rated player. We got Christian McCaffrey. He's going to be the offense. Deontay Foreman, also not too bad. And Amir Abdullah, who's also on my Akron Summit's main franchise series. Go check that one out if you haven't. It's a, that's that's more of like a main standard franchise. I had to grab the U's. I, gr I grabbed him last year in the Toronto Thunderbirds. Teams just don't pick up fullbacks in the fantasy draft. So it was like round 25 or something like that. And he was still sitting there. And I'm like, come on, man. It's the U's. You got to grab the U's. He's a superstar. So if nothing else, we're going to have a really, really good blocker that CMC can follow for hopefully some big games. And then our receiving room, um, DeAndre Hopkins is our number one wide receiver. I'm not necessarily happy about that, but at least here in Madden, he's a 90 overall. He might even have a good season with uh, Tennessee in real life this year. Who knows? Romeo Dobbs and Tyler Boyd. Very, very excited, especially Romeo Dobbs. You guys see my backdrop here. I'm a huge Packers fan, and I'm telling you, he and Dontavian Wicks and Jalen Reed and maybe even Christian Watson, they are going to be something in Green Bay. Let me just tell you what. So Tim Patrick, Justin Watson, you know, it is what it is. Top three wide receivers, not bad, you know, not terrible. And then tight end, we got the chief himself, David Njoku. Love this player. I'm also a closet Browns fan. I'm actually not. I came out of the closet a long time ago. Packers are my number one, but I live here in Ohio, so I do like the Browns. I watch them each and every week. And the chief here, David Njoku, is a very good player. And then we got another AFC North, uh, you know, rival, I guess you would say, from Pittsburgh, Pat Fryermuth. To go along with Hayden Hurst. So pretty good tight ends. I'm happy about it. And then we got the best left tackle in the business, arguably, which appears as he is now holding out in San Francisco as well. I'm sure they'll get that one wrapped up pretty quick, but maybe not. He's old. He's, you know, 14 years pro, but a 99 rated overall here in Madden. Graham Glasgow's our left guard. It is what it is. I think he was actually on the T-Birds as well. Maybe even Ryan Kelly, too. Maybe I just drafted, maybe even Connor McGovern. I might have just drafted the same offensive line that I had on the Toronto Thunderbirds. But if that's the case, they're pretty good. I am not. I know I didn't have Laker Tomlinson, though. So Laker Tomlinson is our right guard. And then Trent Brown on the right side at right tackle. So pretty good offensive line. I like it. Left ends here. Uh, we have six of them. And not really sure why. I didn't. I simmed out after like round 35, 40 maybe. So may, I don't remember drafting all these players like Jonah Williams and Jerry Hughes. So maybe the CPU picked him up. But Zach Sealer is our guy on the left side. Sebastian Joseph Day and Sean Robinson. Not too bad options either. On the right end, al Kadeem Muhammad and Matthew Butler. They probably won't play too much because I'm sure Sebastian Joseph Day and or Sean Robinson will slide over to that spot. Defensive tackle, DJ Reader, he's a good one. Shelby Harris, he's an okay one. But I'm really happy about Reader. And I am super, super stoked to play with a superstar X-Factor Mike lineback linebacker in Roquan Smith. I don't usually have the best middle linebackers on my teams, these, these uh, franchise series that I drop. So I am excited to have arguably one of the best. You know, you could throw guys like Levante David in there. But Roquan Smith, he is a dog and I'm hoping that he's going to be playing like it here in the SFL. And then TJ Edwards. So just a Chicago Bears reunion. Really good linebacker. Robert Spillane, good coverage linebacker. Zach Cunningham won't see the field because injuries are off. So I'm pretty happy about our linebacking room. Corners I'm not as excited about. I always seem to draft old corners in these fantasy drafts. I don't know why, but we got Xavier Howard. He's still good. Same with James Bradbury. And Patrick Peterson makes his return. He was on the Thunderbirds as well. But good players, but not a lot of speed. And Father Time is catching up to these brothers. Troy Hill, too, at uh, 33. Only Michael Ojemudia is the only young one. And he'll never see the field. God help my soul if he does. But Xavier Woods, our free safety. Pretty happy about that. Marcus May, good strong safety. Also kind of old as well. And wait till you see this. I got the same kicker and same punter. Just like the fullbacks, man. 
In the fantasy draft, players don't draft kickers. Jay Tuck, the Texas Longhorn legend, he was there around 20. Like someone, someone's got to pick him up. He was still there. So I'm like, all right, I'm pretty sure I got him and uh, AJ Cole back-to-back -back picks, 32 and then pick one. So anyways, that's the Tuscaloosa Terminators. Get used to them. 87 rated overall team. And I'm very, very happy to uh, to run with this squad here in the weeks to come. Savannah Spirits next up here in the NFC South. Savannah, Georgia, very well known for its, uh, you know, haunted tours, haunted attractions, you know, other ghostly related things like that. And uh, Justin Fields is going to be haunting them, I'm sure, on the field as he's their, <laughs> he's their starting quarterback. Uh, Jesse Bates is the number one player to go along with Saquon Barkley. So Saquon Barkley... Curious to see what he does in Philly this year. And also curious to see what he does on the Savannah Spirits. They got Marshawn Lattimore, Brian O'Neill, Garrett Bowles. This team doesn't look great. And when you got Justin Fields thrown to Hollywood Brown and, uh, well, Marvin Harrison Jr., I did not think he was in this game. He Maybe he just got added. Maybe I'm crazy, but I could have swore that he was having a big thing with the, with the NFL PA. But he's on the team now, so there you go. But still, Justin Fields, though... Throwing to Hollywood Brown, rookie wide receiver, generational, yes, but I don't know. Uh, just don't get a warm, fuzzy feeling about that if you're the Savannah Spirits. North Carolina Flyers up next, obviously, uh, North Carolina, Kitty Hawk, the Wright brothers, you know, Wilbur and Orville. That's where flight kind of it is, where initiated true flight, and they are going to be flying the ball through the air with Joe Burrows targeting Mark Andrews. So, Two AFC, AFC North players, Joe Burrow on the Bengals, Mark Andrews on the Ravens. Now they are connected here to go along with Scary Terry. So you got to watch. I see this team might hold true to their name. Going to be flying that ball downfield. You got Javon Holland at free safety and Brees Hall at running back. Brian Branch, Rasul Douglas, Eric Kendricks. This team looks pretty good here. The North Carolina Flyers. So watch out for them. Uh, they could be making some noise here in the SFL, and then rounding out the NFC South, we have the Oklahoma City Eels. Eels very prevalent in the Oklahoma rivers and streams and so forth. I told you guys, you're getting a history lesson today. So make sure you take this knowledge and apply it somewhere. I don't know where you would, but Sauce Gardner gonna be applying his uh, defensive prowess on the field as he is their highest rated player at 98. And Quinn and Williams, so a couple New York Jets back together here on the OKC Eels, Trey Hendrickson. They also invested pretty heavily in the defense. Alvin Kamara, he's down now to an 86. Tremaine Edmonds, pretty good. Jelani Tavai, Jordan Addison. Boy, is he in a little bit of trouble in real life. And then Kyler Murray is their quarterback. So a decent looking squad, but definitely more so on the defensive side of the football. Over in the NFC West now, we start things off with the Roswell Revolution. And I absolutely love this logo design and this concept. I almost chose this team as my team that I was going to play in this series. It was between them and the Terminators and that logo for the Terminators, man, I just, I had to go with it. But the Roswell Revolution were my second and, you know, obviously Roswell, New Mexico, Area 51, the whole alien thing, pretty cool concept and it makes a ton of sense to me. But Fred Warner is their middle linebacker, highest rated player to go along with Tyron Smith, and then you got Derrick Henry at running back. Cam Hayward's here, Kevin Byard's here, so a little bit of age. Greg Newsome, very good up and coming corner for the Browns. And they got Jordan Love as their quarterback. He's going to be slinging the rock to Calvin Ridley and also Roma Dunze. So this could be a, kind of a sleeper team. Watch out for the revolution to make some noise. And I'm going to be watching them closely because I just really really like that team and then we got the san jose industrials formerly the 49ers and you know silicon valley obviously which got famous for the big industry boom which it still continues to hold in this day you know going all the way back to the 1930s as a matter of fact with uh hewlett packard but they got max crosby they got dexter lawrence they got justin simmons darius williams so man a lot of teams i'm noticing really went hard on the defense Kyron Williams is their back. Zay Flowers is their receiver. And who's slinging the rock to them? It is Drake May. So not sure what to expect from Drake May. But if nothing else, they got some really strong pieces on the defense. Juno Snow Owls are up next. And I know you can't really see the logos too much. They're kind of cut off. But again, 
I have a, about an 18 minute long video that I dropped a couple days ago that shows all the teams, their logos, their uniforms, their stadiums. So if you want to watch that to help you choose what team you want to be on and play for, please go back and check that out. But Juno Snow Owls, uh, you know, being quite common in the cold, cold region of Alaska. Alaska finally gets its own football team here in the SFL. And Creed Humphrey is their center, highest rated player. Denzel Ward, second highest at corner. DJ Moore, pretty good. Jordan May Latta, really good. Harrison Smith, old, but good. Patrick Queen, good. And Matt Stafford, old, but still good. I mean, how can you argue with it? He is still a beast. So the Snowhawks, I mean the Snowhawks, no, that's one of the Madden pre-built teams. Not the Snowhawks. Gonna get that out of our memory right now. This is the uh, Snow Owls and then the Steel Hawks. That's where that's where the wires were getting crossed there. Salem Steel Hawks are the next team. Salem, Oregon, obviously very close to Seattle. So that's kind of where I drew inspiration. Seattle Seahawks or Seattle Seahawks, Salem Steel Hawks. I think Steel Hawks is much cooler. And so does AJ Brown as he is their highest player at a 97. Charvarius Ward, Mike Evans, two really good receivers. Wow. Imagine AJ Brown and Mike Evans as your quarterback one and two with Aaron Rodgers slinging you the ball. I'm sure Aaron Rodgers is happier than when he's on an ayahuasca trip with two wide receivers like that. I mean, come on. It's not even fair. And you get to hand the ball off to Isaiah Pacheco too. So watch out for the Salem freaking Steelhawks. So that is the NFC. Moving on over to the AFC now, starting things off in the AFC North. We have the Edmonton Coyotes, one of two Canada teams. So we got the Edmonton Coyotes, and then, of course, the Toronto Thunderbirds that I showed you guys earlier. Two teams repping Canada here in the SFL. Nick Bosa is their highest rated player and Jonathan Allen and Aiden Hutchinson. So you want to talk about a defensive line that's going to give you nightmares? I mean, come on. Nick Bosa, John Allen, Aiden Hutchinson. Like, this is, this is crazier than whatever that first team I showed you with. Maybe not with Chris Jones and whoever else the other guy was. But that is, that's scary. That's very scary. And Jonathan Taylor and DK Metcalf. Elton Jenkins, very good. Tyson Campbell and uh, Jamal Adams. And their quarterback is Deshaun Watson, which, look, lots of Deshaun haters, I'm sure. I told you I'm a Closet Browns fan that came out of the closet. I like Deshaun Watson. I think that he is going to play good this year as long as he can stay healthy. Moving on over here to the Akron Summit. My hometown team. Summit County being where the uh, Summit, Summit County in Akron, Ohio, being where I drew inspiration for the Akron Summits. And this is also the team that I use in my main relocation franchise series here on the channel. If you want to give that one a watch, go check it out. I'll put a card up here at the top. That's more traditional series, you know, going through the scenarios and the storylines and whatnot. And it's pretty fun time. But the Summits here got Micah Parsons as their highest player, 98. And then a pretty big drop off here going down to Devonta Smith as their best, second best player and best wide receiver. Kenny Clark, the Packer, he's always reliable. JOK, the Browns. So JOK, you know, staying in the Ohio area, going from Cleveland to Akron, only about a 30, 35 minute drive. Braden Smith, Jake Matthews, uh, Carlton Davis. And who is their quarterback? Caleb Williams. So you can't really be too mad at that. I feel like Akron, Ohio is going to be represented well here in the SFL. This one is pretty funny. The Jersey Shore D's. And if you know, you know. If you don't know, I don't have time to explain it right now. But the Jersey Shore D's are going to be the team here. I am. Very <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, man. I was like, let me do something crazy. But Lamar Jackson going to be doing something crazy here in Jersey Shore Seaside Heights as he is their highest rated player at 98. Antoine Winfield, 94. He's obviously very good. Uh, Rashawn Slater, good left tackle. Great even, possibly. Trey Smith. Cooper Cup is here. Chidabay Awuzie is here. James Cook and also James Conner. So, wow. I mean, pretty, pretty much uh, the same player, just a few years older. They must have taken them back to back. And quarterback, well, I showed you guys quarterback. Obviously, it's Lamar Jackson. But I kind of like this team. I could definitely see them doing something and making some noise. And then finishing out the AFC North here, we have the Louisville Fighters, which was my third choice to play as Louisville Fighters, heavily inspired by Muhammad Ali. Obviously, he's from Louisville, Kentucky, and the, the stadium is Muhammad Ali inspired. Uh, one of the jersey, the alternate jerseys is called Sting Like a Bees. 
So very, very heavily inspired by Mr. Ali, one of the best to ever do it, if not the best. George Kittle is their highest rated player. CJ Mosley, Tal Noah Hufunga, and then Justin Herbert as the quarterback. That is pretty good for them. JC Horn. So Herbo here is going to be slinging the ball to Chris Olave and Jacoby Myers. And then you got B. John Robinson as your running back. And I think that he is in, obviously, with the whole Arthur Smith uh, system. He was pretty much underutilized. That was the general consensus. But with new coaching staff and new quarterback, Kirk Cousins, watch for Bijan to have a very, very good season this year. And I bet you his overall shoots up before the season is even halfway through. Over in the AFC East, we got the Portland Maine Lobsters. Two Portland teams in the SFL here, Portland Maine, and then we got another one that you guys will see here soon, Portland, Oregon. But obviously Maine Lobsters, no explanation needed there. I kind of like that logo too with the claw. I tried to keep it kind of cartoonish, you know, rather rather than using like a, a full lobster. That was my thought process anyways. But Josh Hines Allen added the hyphenation there is their best player marlon humphrey second best tj hawkinson he's you know good obviously very good deforest buckner old but still good eric mccoy so no uh other than hawkinson no high picks really on skill position players nico collins is their best receiver baker mayfield though i mean come on now he's a force to be reckoned with in his own right he has earned his spot there in tampa and then ty j spears is their running back so you know, they're okay. Nothing nothing crazy, but they could be a sneaky good team that you kind of have to watch out for. Not sneaky good, just flat out good though is Patrick Mahomes, highest rated player on the Kissimmee Crocs. Kissimmee, Florida, crocodiles, very prevalent in that area. No explanation needed, but wow. Don't want to play them. I think we played them in the preseason, so hopefully that omits us from having to see them in the regular season because you never want to play Patrick Mahomes. He's their best player. Being protected by Teron Armstead is always good. And they got Kenneth Walker, who's a weapon in the backfield. Deron Bland, weapon in the corner. Quinn Miners is good. Garrett Wilson, even. Uh, that, that would actually be... Imagine Patrick Mahomes slinging the rock to Garrett Wilson. That would actually be kind of a problem. And uh, maybe Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson will be a, a problem, too. But, man, Mahomes and Garrett Wilson, like... That could just definitely be something special. Providence Red Raiders here. Nothing crazy there. I just like the heck out of the Red Raiders. And I know you can't see the logo all the way there because Josh uh, Allen's uh, mug is blocking it. But you got two swords. You got the double R in kind of like the uh, very, very cool font. So I'm happy with that. Josh Allen is their highest player down to a 93 here. I think he was, what was he, like a uh, 97 or a 98 in Madden 24? I don't know. Joe Mixon... At a 91, I I can't agree with that, man. He's he's good, but he chokes in the playoffs. He's hurt a lot. I don't know. It is what it is. Jalen Johnson, pretty good. Jeffrey Simmons is here. Micah Hyde is here. Will Anderson Jr., that's a good piece. And Deontay Johnson is their number one wide receiver. So Red Raiders, I mean, you know, kind of like some of the other squads that we've seen here. Nothing crazy, but a few good pieces. And then rounding out the AFC East, we have... The Massachusetts Smithies, which I love that logo as well. I know, again, you can't see it's a big old hammer there with a football and a rock. Uh, you know, Massachusetts, Boston, and the New England area, very well known for their blacksmith uh, unions and, and blacksmiths in general, which is kind of like a lost art in today's day and age. But they are very, very tight knit down there in the Massachusetts area. They got Jalen Ramsey and Buda Baker. So two, you know, another team that really went hard on the defense. Debo Samuel is their best receiver. And then you got more defenders at Brian Burns and Bobby Okereke and Vaughn Miller even. He's, you know, old, but uh, he's still good. And Jameer Gibbs, good halfback. Taylor Moten, who's their quarterback? Jaden Daniels. So this could be a fun team as well. Some weapons there, and they could also make some noise too. Moving on over to the AFC South, we got the Boulder Rockies. Colorado is the Rocky Mountain State after all, and Jair Alexander is their best player. He is really, man. I I'm going to be doing a lot of Packer talk from time to time. Bear with me. But he, I think he's grown in. This is going to be the best version of Jair Alexander that you will see this year. He has matured so much in interviews now. Could just be all a facade, but I think he is locked down. And maybe he'll be locked in here in the SFL as well. He's their best player, though. I don't know if that's a good thing. 
Um, Joe Tooney also here as well. Derek Brown, Kyle Ham Hamilton, Kristen, Christian Kirk, highest rated wide receiver. I mean, how did that go for the Jaguars last season? Not He did get hurt in his defense, but still, you don't really want a Christian Kirk as your wide receiver number one. Montez Sweat, Kyle Pitts, though, and good uh, tight end. And their quarterback is Russell Wilson. So, uh, And that's funny. He was a <laughs> Denver, uh, Colorado quarterback. Now he's a Boulder, Colorado quarterback. But you just don't know if a Russell Wilson, Christian Kirk option is the best thing in the world. So we'll have to see. Uh, I'm not holding my breath too much. Moving on now to the uh, St. Pete Manatees, two Florida teams. We have the Kissimmee Crocs, obviously, and the St. Pete Manatees here. Justin Jefferson is their best player. Tristan Wirth, second best at left tackle position. Tyron Matthew may be a little too high at a 91. I mean, he's good, yes, but I don't know. May I, I would say maybe like 87, 88. I'm not the Madden's rating adjuster, though, so what do I know? Quentin Nelson and Tony Pollard is their number one halfback and uh gabe davis is their number one no justin jefferson i'm sorry gabe davis at number two i was gonna say that is where he should be and then quarterback is trevor lawrence and you know what pretty sure the saint pete manatees were the jacksonville jaguars when i relocated them so there you go memphis suns up next on the docket i'd probably say they were my fourth favorite team i know you can't see that logo in its entirety but you get the general idea a sun with the football in it and the Memphis Suns, not to say that they are the sunniest of states. This is not referring to, sh to sunshine. Any of my old heads that might be out there. This is referring to Sun Records. Producer Sam Phillips founded that in Memphis, Tennessee. And Sun Records uh, birthed some of the old school names that you may know and love. Like Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, guys like that. So a throwback tribute to Sun Records with the Memphis Suns here. If you know, you know. Devontae Adams knows he's their number one player. Frank Ragnow, good center. He's their number two. And Josh Jacobs. So we got a former Packer and a current Packer on the same team here. And I kind of like Devontae Adams and Tyler Lockett as a one-two combination at receiver. And CJ Stroud is their quarterback. So the Memphis Suns could be a very fun team as well. They got some uh, okay pieces on defense here. Kendall Fuller and uh, Iki Aquanu. So you know, that uh, that is what it is and it ain't what it ain't, as they say. And then finishing off the AFC South here, we got the Topeka Silverbacks. Uh, you know, I was trying to find, I wanted to make a team called the Silverbacks. They don't live in the U.S., so unless I wanted to make a team, you know, in a whole different continent, which I didn't, you can't even do that in Team Builder. Matter of fact, you can't even make a Canadian team. So if you ever see one of those, it's going to say Minnesota as their state. So stupid. I'm pretty sure you could do that, make a non-US team in college football. Maybe not, but anyways, I digress. But a huge conservation center and tons of big zoos in uh, Topeka, Kansas. So, you know, I figured it makes sense. Justin Matabuike is their best player, and Dakota Rain Prescott is their uh, second best player. He's good. Dak is good. I, you know, people roast him. He's good. He can't win a playoff game, but he's good. Ronnie Stanley's here. Tariq Wollins here. Wyatt Teller is here, so good offensive line, it would appear. Uh, Dak to Puka Nakua, that could be fun. And then Hassan Reddick and also DeAndre Swift, uh, Jimmy Ward, Nate Hobbs. So the Topeka Silverbacks, they look pretty well-rounded also. And last but not least, the good old AFC West here. We got our second Portland team. That would be the Portland Destroyers. Uh, Destroyers being large war vessels, battleships, if you will. If you ever played the board, go it's not a board game, but you know, the game Battleship, a Destroyer is one of the ships in there and portland obviously being a port city so it made a lot of sense to me patrick zertan ps2 is their highest rated player very good corner no one's gonna disagree with that demario davis is old elder statesman on this team but still an x factor still a high rated player christian darisaw and uh keenan allen wide receiver number one you got jared goff as the quarterback so that could be a old but fun connection and aaron jones is their running back bobby wagner lots of older players on this team i mean you got some guys like uh you know ps2 and whatnot but you got demario davis you got keenan allen aaron jones even kind of getting up there bobby wagner definitely getting up there jared goff so the destroyers are uh, gonna be looking to not get destroyed too much by these young bucks but they do got some elder players on the team we got the sacramento sharks here up next and tj watt 
Nick Chubb, two very good players. Are their two highest rated? Lane Johnson, great offensive lineman. Chris Lindstrom in his own right as well. And Jalen Waddle. They got some weapons for sure. Uh, Colton Miller, pretty good. Asante Samuel, pretty good. Who's their quarterback? Not so good. Okay. Uh, Kenny Pickett, Marcus Mariota, and Jeff Driscoll. What a quarterback battle in preseason, I'm sure. I'm sure that people were on the edge of their seats. But hopefully what they lack in the quarterback position, they may make up on the defense. It's going to be a lot of Nick Chubb. I mean, let's just be real. It's going to be a lot of Nick Chubb on the Sacramento Sharks. And then moving on, we got the Montana Mountain Lions. I, I picked, I wanted to use some teams as states, you know, like think the Carolina Panthers. They play in Raleigh. They're not the Raleigh Panthers. They're the Carolina Panthers. Think the Indiana Pacers, right, in the NBA. I made most of the team cities but I did want to keep some states like the Massachusetts Smithies, the Dakota Pronghorns, the North Carolina Flyers. So you can't, you got to put a city in team builder. So you may see like this team, for example, when you see them on field, it'll say they play in Montana, Montana. Obviously that's not a thing, but I wanted it to show up as Montana. So if you see that and you're like, wow, this guy's stupid. Uh, Montana, Montana is not a city. While I am stupid in, in many situations, that one was actually by design. But let me stop getting off on a tangent there. Daniil Hunter, their best player, not sure if you like that. Tyler Linderbaum and Dre Greenlaw as your two second best, not sure if you like that. Brock Purdy is here though, uh, but he's not in the Kyle Shanahan system. So will he still be the superstar that Madden dubbed him? I don't know, we'll find out. Rashawn Gary, very good player. Chris Godwin, also pretty good. In his own right as well, Jonathan Jones, Quandre Diggs. So not the greatest team in the world. Maybe could be a sleeper team, but Brock Purdy's going to have to really show out for him. And then the last team here in the SFL, also one of my personal favorites, is the Las Vegas Jacks. Love the logo and the concept for this team. Don't think the league would really like it too much uh, in real life. You know, Las Vegas, obviously the biggest gambling city in the world. Tons of casinos there. And uh, I see their quarterback, no stranger to big paydays himself, Kirk Cousins. But he'll be slinging. That could be fun. Kirk Cousins to Tyreek Hill. Kirk Cousins is a beast, man. I mean, he's never, you know, won anything or really gone too far. But my dude is the definition of consistency. He can play the game of football. So a Kirk Cousins, Tyreek Hill combo could be pretty good. Uh, lots of good defensive players here. Alex Highsmith, Derek Stingley, one of the best up and coming corners in the game. Matthew Judon getting a little old, but still very good. Tyler Smith, a couple, uh, couple of veterans there. Well, not Tyler Smith, but uh, Judon, High Smith, and Cam Jordan, definitely a veteran. Grover Stewart. So again, lots of, lots of uh, defenders here, but Tyreek Hill, one of the best in the business, if not arguably the best. And then also Drake London as a number two, not a bad option at all. And while you guys wait for the next episode to drop, if you want to, if you've never seen the SFL before, you know, I know a lot of you guys are going to be uh, returning members from that series, but while you're waiting for episode two to come out, go back and check out the uh, previous SFL. Like I said, we had 52 something, I think it was 52 exactly, subscribers that joined that team. Uh, videos got some pretty good traction and, you know, you can ask anybody who was in this series last year, or I should say last, you know, cycle, Madden 24. I interact with you guys. I'm, I'm pretty good about that. I love getting, you know, in touch with my subscribers, especially if you're in the Discord. But uh, yeah, go check it out if you want to. But I got a feeling this iteration of the SFL is going to be leaps and bounds. I don't want to say better, but I do. I do want to say better with all three teams being customized. You guys got to see them now. So, you know, make sure you, uh, you think about with the players I showed you, what team design you like and whatnot. Think about what team you want to be on. And comment down below because not going to do gameplay in this episode. I debated on it, but I want to give, you know, the subscribers, you guys a chance to get your players in so I can showcase you ne next week, show, you know, your rating and what you look like and everything. So I think that gameplay would be better suited for next week. This week was just to kind of get you familiar with the league, explain the rules if you're new. But man, oh man, I cannot wait Next episode will drop very soon, and then I will be on a rotation of SFL and then my main series, uh, Akron Summits Franchise. I'll just be one and one. So one upload of SFL, one upload of Akron Summits, but I will upload the second episode of the SFL next because I am ready to get on the field and showcase you guys. But 
I hope you guys are excited. This is going to be a fun ass time, man. It was last year and I, it's just join. Okay. Join and you won't regret it. That's all I can say. You got to take my word for it. But with all that being said, that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one for the debut of the SFL gameplay. Until then, peace.